This is your instructor, Mr. Joey Walker, talking about your work, in this case, for your student's book, for the fourth activity for Unit 1 from our course book, face-to-face -face second edition. We're just seeing the topics the main and the main explanation from this area. So we have this information, and I'm your instructor, Mr. Joey Walker. So let's start over. So in this particular uh, lesson, we will see the following. For vocabulary, we will see numbers 1 through 100. We already have seen one, 0 through 1. Now we're going to uh, kick it up a little bit. Why not so? We have grammar, open questions, asking for personal information. And finally, we're going to ask for polite expressions for asking repetition. That would be our main area, uh, but also we're going to see some other helpful expressions whenever we want to be polite. All right, so moving on, we have the first part, numbers. So remember, we already have established that there's a little bit uh, of a difference between the American and the British English. So we, we say the numbers one and up. Well, you'll see the square one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Whereas the British would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. American, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. British, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Check how they stress a little more the T's where for example, Americans from my area in the south, they use 20 instead of 20. They say 20, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30, whereas the British is 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. 30 and 30. Check they stress the T's. They don't pronounce the R's so much. We have 31, 32, and so on until we reach 40. Whereas it's a British, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. 37, 38, 39, and 40. Check is 40. 40, not 40. 40. Mm -hmm. Right? And so on. So check the stress changes. Americans, they say teen. 14, 15, 16, 17. They say 14, 15, 16. So the stress changes a little bit. Here the same. 20, 20, 30, 30, 40, 40, 50, 50, 60, 70. So then we say 70, 70, American is 70, 80, so it's 70 and 80 in the British, 90, and instead of 19 and 100 or 100. To remember 1890. So remember, we can make some natural pronunciations 44 or 44, 67 or 67. Either one is fine. We just need to be careful with that. So, move on. We have the question words. So, you used to ask about a person or a place. Who is your mother? Who is your sister? Who is your boss? What? When we used to ask about information, that would be for things. What is your name? What is your phone number? What is your address? Will you like to give out an explanation or a reason? Why are you crying? Why are you sad? Why is she hungry? 
who use where for places. Where is your mother? Where is your father? Where is your teacher? So we ask about a place and we use when to ask about time. When is the party? At seven. Tomorrow, for example. When is your graduation ceremony? Okay, uh, next year. Or when is the concert? To establish some of them. So whenever we ask about personal information, we have some cultural differences. For example, we say, what's your first name? In this case, for example, whenever we go to a lobby of the hotel to uh, confirm or to show up when once we have confirmed our reservation, we ask you, what's your first name? Uh, Joe, you know, what's your last name? For the Americans, they would use last name, whereas the yeah, British, they would use surname or surname, since they don't pronounce the other one. Surname. Just another one, we say, what's your address? Or in the British, they would say, what's your address? The stress is address, not address. What's your phone number? What's your phone number? Where are you from? And what's your phone number? Or what's your, oh, I'm blocking this. Is what's your teacher's phone number? What's your company's phone number? Some well, some of these are questions that they can ask you. So they say, what's your first name? Joey, what's your last name? Walker, what's your address? You say 67, 69, Red Road Avenue. What's your phone number? 732-195-7175. Where are you from? I'm from Los Angeles. And what's your company's phone number? 732-172-79. Three, four. And in this case, okay, yes, well, here's your room number. That would be 12, and this is the key. Right? Thank you, and you go on. Now, finally, we have the phone numbers here. You already remember this, that uh, whenever we have a double, for example, we have here double. We would say in the British, 619-401-2552, and so on. So I'm not going to do this. If you want the explanation, there's an explanation for this in the past video, which is coffee break. So I'll just move along. And here we have how to be polite, which is the last part of this presentation. I don't know why they make skip they got mixed up this presentation so whenever we want to be polite we don't say i want we never say i want i want a hamburger i want, I want french fries say i'd like a hamburger or can i have a hamburger can i have sounds more polite said i want i'd like is better or you can say can i have whenever you are asking for something when somebody gives you an order send me the report you can Especially bosses, neither. Could you send me the report? Instead of saying, send me the report, which is a direct word, could you send me the report? Leave me alone when somebody bothers you. Leave me alone. So could you give me a minute? Okay, instead of saying, hey, leave me alone, could you give me a minute? Tell me when you're available. You can say, let me know instead of tell me. Which says the direct order, tell me when you're available. You can say, let me know when you're available. You're wrong. Imagine you say that to your boss, he would kill you. So I would say, I think you might be mistaken. So in this case, well, not wrong, but mistake. There's a mistake. That's a bad idea. I'm not so sure that's a good idea. Sounds better, less invasive, more politically correct. Your work isn't good. You can say, I'm not quite satisfied with this work. So instead of saying your work is not good, which is that is really offensive. And I don't like the colors in this design. You can say, I'm not too fond of these colors in this design. Thing that is, you're not very, very, uh, feel, feel very appealed to these ones. Whenever we repeat, you don't say, what? You never use what? You say, sorry? Can you repeat that? Or you can say, 
beg your pardon? But you never say what? You say, beg your pardon or sorry? Can you repeat that? Can you repeat it, please? Okay, so those are the fresh, uh, phrases that we would use. But with this part, we conclude. I hope you've had a good time, and uh, I'll see you the next video. This is your teacher signing off.